Good evening. My name is Isaac, and I will be having a talk on why face to face conversations are so important. See, I find it very weird why people would like to be talking to other people through screens. Like, you're talking to a computer. I find it very strange because you're actually not there in person and you're talking to simply a mechanical window. It's absurd, really, to me. Like, unbelievable. And it gets even worse with text because you can't even see the face of the person there. And I just don't like it overall because, you know, in terms of conversations, you really have to be present there, you know what I mean? Not just a, a face on, not just a face on a screen or, or just a jumbled up bunch of words. So that's why I really want to emphasize why face-to-face -face conversations are so important. Okay. I wasn't actually going to give a talk about face-to-face -face conversations without actually being present. <laughs> no, no, of course not, because the entire talk is supposed to be about a conversation that happens when I can see your faces. And so, this is my talk, and, I, and what I want to share to you guys right now is why I find face-to-face -face conversations to be so important. Let me start off with this. I want to mention a particular friend of mine that I've known for a good time already. This friend, she's a shy one. When I first met her in Model United Nations, she barely spoke a word to me. Not even when I tried to interact with her, she would only respond with the occasional uh-huhs or mm -hmm's or the occasional nod of the head. But I still tried nonetheless, and little by little, she began to open up. And by the time we attended a leadership conference together, she had become a total chatterbox, as in she couldn't stop talking because she always had something to say. Now, during this conference, during lunchtime, this friend comes up to me and she asks me, Isaac, can you help me with something? I look at her and I say, sure, what's up? She clears her throat and she discreetly points a thumb towards another table. And on that table is a group of Korean kids having lunch. She says to me, can you help introduce me to those people? And like I said, she's shy and she can't really hold a conversation with strangers. But I didn't understand this at that time. And so I said, why me? Like, can't you do that by yourself? My friend deadpans. She looks at me in the eye and she says, Oh my God, Isaac, you sound so old. And to be honest, I agree with her. I mean, it's not often that you'd be able to find a teenager that is so comfortable in conversations, especially with a stranger, without acting all awkward or immediately searching for their phone when the conversation dies down. It's the type of social ability that you'd expect from adults or the parents of the adults, not from some 16-year-old teenager. In fact, a good amount of friends of mine, a good amount of people that I meet who are the same age as me, say that they prefer texting over talking. And it was only last year that I started to wonder why my mindset was so different compared to everyone else. And I didn't put that much thought into it earlier on, but my recent trip to the Philippines gave me an eye-opening insight that really solidified my preference for these face-to-face -face conversations. In the next few minutes, I want to share to you why exactly I find these types of conversations to be so important and what they mean for us in this modern age. You'll find some clues in the story I'm about to tell. I want you to come with me to a Japanese restaurant at Paya Thai in 2019. It's a popular one and the tables are packed with people. In the corner is a family of four. The mother's telling her two sons to smile for the picture. And here's the actual picture. The boy on the left, that's me. 
12 year old me. I am trying my best to pose for the picture while playing Minecraft at the same time. And clearly, that's not going so well because neither my brother and I are even looking at the camera for the picture. And now, any adult looking at this picture would probably assume that it's just another kid stuck on the device. And looking back on it now, honestly, that's what I see too. But that's not what my younger self saw. What my younger self saw was his precious screen time, which is already short enough, being shortened even further. See, my family has a rule where we're not allowed to use any devices during mealtimes. So that means we can't have it on our hands, on the tables, not even on our laps. It needs to be kept in our pockets or kept in our bags. And so that situation, that was a miracle exception caused by me annoying my parents too much. I didn't even understand that role then, and even as I entered my teenager years, I still didn't. I wondered, why in the world can't I use my phone? Look, look, I'm done eating. There's nothing else for me to do. And I am so bored. And because of that, I ended up missing Santa, who gave out presents during that restaurant visit. Santa wasn't there. It, it didn't actually happen, but it's just here to serve my point that if I was just constantly stuck on my device, I could have missed a special, irreplaceable moment, all because I just wanted to build another dirt house in Minecraft. And so, if my younger self was part of this audience right now, a part of you, watching me give this conversation on why face-to-face -face conversations are so important to me, he would be absolutely flabbergasted. He'd say, Isaac, what the heck is this? This is a complete 180 of my beliefs. And to answer him, I would tell him about the trip to the Philippines that my family took. See, we stayed at our aunt's house, and every time it was time for dinner, we would gather around the table to eat. Nobody was allowed to bring any devices on the table, and there weren't any TVs in the dining room either. Just us, each other, and the food. I had one of my greatest conversations that night where I just felt really involved with the discussion. I, I asked questions, I laughed at jokes, and I listened to really interesting topics. But out of all of those memorable moments, there was one thing that really struck me, and it was a phrase that my aunt had said. What my aunt said was that she liked how there were no devices, no TVs in the room, because it forced us to talk. Forced to talk. That phrase, let it sink in for a moment. I didn't really understand what that phrase meant. And the only thing I knew was that if I just listened to the person who was talking to me fully, 100%, without thinking of a response to say afterwards, then somehow the conversation would be twice as satisfying and as fulfilling as before. And so, to test this, to understand it further, I decided to apply this when I went back to Thailand. And here's what I knew at the time. Number one is that communication isn't just the words that I'm saying. It's body language, too. The human mind, it picks up mountains of information conveyed by the way we carry ourselves, by our posture. See, one person could have their head, have their head tilted down and their arms kept close to themselves. And another person could have their chin held up high and take up a lot of space. And we'd notice all of this and we'd say, oh, this person seems kind of shy and wow, this person seems really confident of himself. Two, not just body language, not just the words that I'm saying, but also the tone of my voice. There are certain patterns in a person's voice that we are able to pick up and use it to determine the emotion that the person is feeling at the time. 
Let's put this into an example. I'll say something like, I am having the time of my life talking to you guys right now. I totally don't want to be back at home playing some games. And you'd notice that, and you'd be able to tell that it was sarcasm. If you couldn't, then don't worry. Now you know how I feel when I'm texting. And speaking of texting, number three. In text, there is a complete lack of these two forms of communication, and it suffers from it. See, me personally, I consider myself to be awfully bad at texting. I cannot figure out whether a message sent to me is a joke or not, unless somebody, unless the person who sent it puts a significant amount of obvious laughing emojis at the end. And even when I'm talking with other friends in person, they say that sometimes I sound, sound so different when through, I'm speaking through text, because whenever they read it out, they feel like my voice, my texting voice, is monotone, robotic. And somehow for me, the conversations that I have through text aren't as satisfying. It's, it's kept to small talk, and we don't really delve into deeper topics that I enjoy. And so, even, even the people in school, they know this too. I sent out a form recently to teachers and students alike, where I asked one simple question, whether they liked to have a general conversation through text or through an in-person conversation. And texting was the answer of the minority. The majority of the people instead said that they prefer having a conversation through being in person or that they're okay with both. Now, me personally, right, I can't, I don't really find myself comfortable in texting situations either. But it gets even worse when, for some reason, even though we don't like doing it, even, even when we don't like having a general conversation through text, somehow we still do it. Sometimes when I'm at an outing with my friends where we're supposed to be enjoying the company of each other, my friends are scrolling on their phones. And honestly, I find it strange, the fact that I could be talking to a person and that they would find it okay to take out a phone and then sort of create this invisible barrier between him and I, them or I. And honestly, it's rude for me. In fact, I, I, I find it so rude that you would never catch me pulling out my phone when another person is talking to me. And so... One moment, sorry. Hello? Oh, hi, yeah. How are you doing? No, 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 yeah. Totally fine. I'm, I'm not busy right now, yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe not tonight, though. How's, how's tomorrow's sound? Yeah. 6, 6.30 p.m.? Okay, 6.30 p.m. Yeah, see you there, bro. That, that wasn't a real call, I'm sorry. I just had my friend call my number. But it serves to emphasize my points that probably when I pulled out my phone, you guys felt uncomfortable, that you, could, you felt separated, distant, and the connection that you and I were having when I was talking to you was suddenly cut. It's actually so common in the modern world now, and us as people, we're so used to experiencing all of these multitasking, all of these uh, people pulling out their phones whenever you're talking to them, that whenever we sit down and have a conversation and the person you're talking to actually puts their phone in their pocket, it feels like they've received a special gift. And that leads me to my next point, which is also what I learned when I went back to Thailand. The reason why I place so much importance in having these face-to-face -face conversations is not just because these conversations, in my opinion, are the best types of conversation that we can have, but also because it's the types of conversations that build up relationships the most. See, 
that phrase that my aunt said, being forced to talk, it doesn't necessarily mean being forced to chat against your will. What my aunt was saying then was simply that if you pay your full attention to the other person as they're talking to you, listening to them completely, focusing on nothing else, then they will actually feel like they're genuinely being listened to, that their words are getting through to you, that they're valued, that the time and effort that they're spending on you is valued. See, we humans, we're social creatures. We, we can't survive a day without some form of interaction, even if it's just as one-sided as scrolling through TikTok reels or seeing the latest post on Facebook. But all of that, and the small talk that you have through text, all of that is, are small drops of water that amount to one big gulp of conversation. So the next time that you're having dinner with your family, I would like to suggest that maybe you try one thing. Maybe consider putting your phone away, putting any device that you're using usually use when you're having dinner, put it away, and try and start a conversation with your family members. It doesn't have to be anything deep. It doesn't have to be anything complex or philosophical. You can just ask about something interesting that happened in your day. Because who knows? Maybe that small moment of trying to connect, that small moment of trying to socialize, to bond with the other person, is just what they need. Thank you.